Good morning, everybody. Thanks for watching. So I think that God doesn't give us the full measure of faith because we still have to understand that we're saved by Christ Jesus' perfect faith. If we had a full measure of faith, then we can trust in that. It's my faith that gets me here or gets me there. But if God withholds that faith, and Scripture says in Romans 12, 3, that God gives each of us a measure of faith. So if someone has no faith, then that is a gift that God has not given them yet. And whatever measure we have is what God has given to us. If we want more of a measure of faith, it's God that has to fill us up. We cannot create anything on our own. So we each have a measure, and it fluctuates from time to time, it seems. And I think all of that is in place for us to understand that it's not our faith that needs to be perfect, that needs to complete anything. It's the faith of Jesus Christ and Him facing death in the garden and throughout His life and believing God that He will do His thing by going to the cross, by dying, by being dead. He had to believe that God would raise him from non-existence. And Jesus Christ's faith was perfect going into death. And if we look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 22, it says, For if a law were given, that is to vivify, really, righteousness were out of law. But the scripture locks up all together under sin, that the promise out of Jesus Christ's faith may be given to those who are believing. Now there's many Bibles that try to translate that verse to say that it's our faith in Jesus Christ may be given to those who are believing. But that doesn't make sense. It's like if you believe in Jesus and then you're given the belief in Jesus, that doesn't make any sense. But what does make sense here is that there's two different faiths here. That the promise out of Jesus Christ's faith, that's Jesus Christ's faith. His faith in going through what he was going to go through, going into death, and having the faith that his father would bring him out of death. That's Jesus Christ's faith. So out of Jesus Christ's faith may be given to those who are believing. That's the faith that we have, the faith that is given to us in measure. There's no measure of Jesus Christ's faith. He had the full measure of faith, which saves all humanity and all creation. That's what we are given when we're given belief. Now remember in Romans 3, 21 through 23 this faith Jesus Christ's faith is for all and it's on all who are believing so those who are given belief it's it's on them it's on us now but Jesus Christ's faith is for all humanity so 1 Timothy 4:10 rings true that God is the savior of all mankind especially of believers so those especially saved believers who get to come in early are given this belief before others. They're given this measure of belief, some measure of belief to reap the righteousness that comes from Christ Jesus' faith. And you look at both of these verses in Galatians 22 and uh, Romans 21 to 23. We'll start in Romans going back up to verses 10 and 11, that not one is just, not even one. Not one is understanding, not one is seeking out God. So scripture here is qualifying all of creation 
as being in the same boat of being sinners, of being imperfect, of not understanding, not seeking out God. So we're all there. No one can seek out God. No one can not sin. It's not possible. We're all lumped into that same group. Same thing in Galatians 22, going back up to verse 21. May it not be coming to that, for if law were given that is able to vivify really righteousness were out of law, but the scripture locks up all together under sin. And these verses come before the announcement that we're saved by Jesus Christ's faith. Because if it were our faith, if we somehow mustered it up and we believed, then that means we're getting out of the boat of not one is understanding, not one is seeking God. We're getting out of the boat of being subjected to sin like Scripture says that we are. If it's our faith, then we're getting out of what Scripture says we are. But we can't do that. So it's Jesus Christ's faith that comes to ones that are not understanding. Not one is seeking God. If we're not seeking God, we can't muster up faith of our own and present it to God. If we're not seeking God, which Scripture says we are not, every human being is in the same category. We all are sinners. No one is seeking God, but religion says that they are seeking God, that they make a faith choice or that they do something in order to seek God enough to get the gifts of Christ, which is totally untrue because those gifts are given to us. The belief in Jesus Christ's faith is given to us in measure by God. And if God chooses not to give it to someone, then they don't get it. The Apostle Paul wasn't seeking Christ Jesus. He was going to arrest and kill believers in Jesus. He wasn't seeking anything else when he was knocked off of his horse and told what he must do and what he must be doing. And he's a pattern for us all. And it rings true here in Romans 3 and Galatians chapter 3 as well. That we're all locked up under sin. We can't do anything until God gives us what he gives us, that belief to believe in the faith of Jesus. And I think, um, you know, in my... I'll speak in my personal experience. I think that that God doesn't give us a full measure of faith, even though he backs us into a corner where we can't believe anything else. Because once we come to these, these truths that God is the Savior of all mankind, that God is sovereign, that death is death, and all these truths that we come into, we know they're true. We know what, what Paul says is true. We know that Scripture is true because they unlock revelations that a no human being would ever do it this way and hardly any human being believes it because it's so contrary to what our humanity is grace unbridled grace that goes against everything that every human is every human wants to be their self-made man they want to earn this you do good you get this you do bad you do that you get that or you don't get that this goes so against the grain that we know it's from the glorified Christ Jesus. But yet, that's our only belief. We can't go anywhere. There's no religion to go to. There's nowhere else to turn, just like the man in Mark with his son. Jesus was the only one there. There was nowhere else for him to turn, and there's nowhere else for us to turn. It's this true Jesus only. For that man in, in Mark with his son who was uh, being tortured by the evil spirit, there was nowhere else to go. It was Jesus or nothing. For us, it's this true Jesus or nothing. It's just true God or nothing. So it makes every 
sense that we would want to believe because there's nowhere else to go. It benefits us to the highest degree to believe. So any act of not having belief goes against our will. So that's a testament against human free will right there. I have nowhere else to go. I don't, I don't, I don't research other religions. You know, I, I've been through that. I know that this God is true. I know that this Jesus is true. So I have nowhere else to go. So any faith that's not given to me, God is actively going against my will to withhold or withdraw that faith. And I believe it's a lesson to me, perhaps, to understand that it's not my faith. That whatever measure of faith God has given me, it's only tapping into the perfect faith of Christ Jesus, and that's what saves me. His faith, his death, his entombment, and his resurrection. You know, I, I have a hard time looking towards God to uh, try to figure out what he's doing. You know, uh, the pain that, you know, I've gone through in my life and my my pain is is nowhere near um a lot of people's pain but uh, you know when i uh made some mistakes and I destroyed my career and destroyed a lot of my relationships because of what i did and the relative you know i try to think about oh how's god going to work all this out and i can't i can't see it i i can't see it and I try to envision how it's all going to be worked out in the end but I get myself in the trouble there because I just can't see it and then I have to stop thinking about it but then it's hard for me to then look at an expectation that I know I have but I, I want to visualize it I want to imagine what it would be like but in that process, I try to see how God's going to work everything out, and I can't see that, so I have to back off from thinking about it at all and just understand that God's got it, that he's going to work things out in ways that I don't understand and I can't understand. And... I think it, it comes to a point where God wants us to not know the outcome, but understand that he holds the outcome. Because if we had a vision of how all of this is going to work out, you know, some of us have gone through the death of a loved one and the death of children. Oh my gosh, I mean... It, I can't imagine anything worse. And we can't see how God's going to work that out. We understand the contrast principle. We, Yeah, I got it. We got the contrast. But God's got to do something beyond what we can possibly imagine to make death a necessary part of his plan to make sin, pain, and suffering necessary for his plan. He's going to have to do something beyond what we can even think or imagine. Paul says that our future glory is not even comparable to what we're going through now. But it's not about being able to figure out and trust in the outcome. It's about trusting God with the outcome. And that's what I'm trying to do now. And, um, you know, I encourage others that are going through um, whatever you're going through to do the same. Now, that was just kind of a uh, got
got to get things off my chest. So I, I hope that was helpful to you guys. But thanks for listening, and I will talk to you soon.